So today we're gonna be installing vinyl plank flooring. Now this product is actually gonna be installed in our basement, so we wanted to make sure that we had something that was gonna be waterproof as well as scratch resistant. Ultimately, we, we ended up going with life-proof flooring that's available exclusively at Home Depot, and today we're gonna to show you exactly how to lay it down. In order to achieve the best results, we need to make sure that the floor that we're laying this floating floor on top of is nice and flat. So since we're working with a concrete slab, we went ahead a couple days ago and put some concrete floor leveler down to make sure that was the case. Today we're gonna come back with a floor scraper and scrape off any little bumps and high spots and then vacuum the whole area up and make sure there's no debris for the flooring to go over. Now the cool thing about this floor is it's super easy to install. The way that the planks actually join together is called a drop lock installation and they simply just click together. The other nice thing is that it has a, uh, an underlayment or a pad built into the bottom of that so that's not needed as well. In order to make sure that we end up with the best looking floor we're going to go ahead and lay out the room first before we start installing any pieces of flooring. What I mean by laying that out is to make sure that we don't end up with any skinny rips at the end of the row as well as any skinny boards or cuts at the end of a wall. Now we've got a pretty complex basement and it's a big space with multiple rooms that are adjoining. So we're gonna focus on a couple of key areas. However, if you're dealing with a rectangular room, this is a lot easier of a process. All right, so when you're laying this floor, it's pretty straightforward. There's directions that come with the flooring itself. So it's gonna tell you exactly how to do it. However, you're gonna start with a quarter inch spacer and you're gonna put that against the wall. You lay your first row out and then slide it up against that quarter inch spacer. Then as you go on, you're gonna, the last board in each run, that off cut is gonna be what you use to, to start the next row. And the tongue is what is gonna be towards the, the wall um, or the back of the run. So that's gonna be the overhanging part. That's gonna slip into the groove. You put it in on an angle, get it started on an angle, and then drop it down. And then we're gonna take a plastic mallet and then I've got a little plastic block that's got a groove cut in it that sits right over top of the groove and we just tap that into place. We've got our quarter inch spacer back here and then we tap this against the wall and we can start our next board. So as you're moving on down this row, you'll take the next board and you'll slip the tongue into the groove, slide it over, drop it in nice and tight. Try and keep this seam over here as tight as possible. Hammer this tongue down into the groove. You take your block and tighten up those gaps until they're all the way gone. Now when you get to an end of a run, you'll obviously want to measure and cut that board to length. However, if you find yourself on an angled wall like this, this is a really inexpensive angle finder that you can simply lay along the side of the board, find that angle and tighten it up and then transfer it to, to the board that you're gonna be cutting, like so. And then just draw a line there. Now in a perfect world, you would just run one room from one corner to the opposite diagonal corner. However, sometimes you need to come out of that room and you gotta work backwards. And that what we're gonna call that is back laying this floor. And essentially what that means is you've gotta slip this groove up underneath of the tongue and fit it into place. It's definitely a little bit more difficult, so you're gonna to wanna to minimize this as much as possible. However, it's not that it can't be done. So you simply just slip that board into place like that and we're gonna hammer this down. And knock that into place. Okay, so we've got some new door jams in here and we need to undercut these such that this flooring will slide up underneath them for a nice look. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna take a scrap piece of the flooring and we're gonna set it up against the jam. And then I'm gonna use this oscillating multi-tool 
to cut through the jam and flush cut it so that it's nice and even with the floor height. Okay, so you sometimes find yourself in a spot where you can't get your hammer in there to, to finish that board into the groove or that tongue into the groove. So you, this is called a pull bar. You'll simply put this behind the, the piece of wood and then you can hammer that nice and tight right into that groove for a seamless finish. All right, so a couple more tips that I wanted to give you guys. When it comes to laying this floor, make sure that you vacuum up all of the debris so we don't have any of that traps, trapped underneath of the floor. But also those quarter inch spacers are not only going to give you the correct spacing for expansion and contraction, but they're also going to provide a nice solid surface to hammer this floor into one another um, up against. If you don't have that solid surface to hammer it into, the flooring, since it's floating and it's not, or it's not nailed or glued down, it's going to want to move. And as it moves, it's going to open up all of those joints and just cause a really big headache. Now when it comes to cutting the flooring, there's a few different methods that you can take. Um, if you have access to a miter saw, that's by far going to be the easiest. However, it does create a little bit of mess and you're going to want to be careful with the, um, the sawdust that cutting this material creates. Also, you can actually cut this stuff with a utility knife and you can use a speed square to give you a nice straight cut and you take a utility knife and make several passes on top of the flooring. That's going to score it and then you flip it over and snap the back of it. Once you get it snapped, you can use that utility knife across the back in order to cut that, um, that underlayment that's attached to the back. And for any notched corners or anything like that, you can also use a jigsaw to make that process a lot easier. Obviously, when it comes to ripping these boards, the table saw is gonna be the easiest. However, again, you can score it and snap it, but running it down this table saw is gonna be the most consistent and easiest way to be able to rip these planks. All right, so the next thing that we've got to tackle is our transitions. The transitions are any time that you're mating up with a different type of flooring. So if you've got two different levels um, of flooring that you would need a, a reducer of some type, and they make this stuff in the same exact color as the flooring itself. So in this case, we've got carpet here and the luxury vinyl plank. Now these are roughly the same height, so we're gonna use what's called as a T-mold. And the T-mold is a transition that is the same height and is just gonna cover up the seam so we have a nice look going into our carpeted room. Now we've got this metal channel that's come with it. I've already gone ahead and cut these down to length. The metal channel, I've cut down a little bit uh, shorter than the T-mold itself just to make it nice and easy to get in. Now this also comes with nails and if you're, if you're fastening it to a wood subfloor, then you can just simply nail it into place. However, we're going down to concrete, so we're gonna use some construction adhesive and adhere this metal channel down to the concrete and then we'll come back with our T-mold and just snap it into place. Now when you're locating where to end your floor and position your T-mold, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you make it such that the edge of your T-mold is um, in the center or close to it in the center of the door when it's closed. That way when you're in this room and the door is closed, you only see the flooring for that room and same for this room, you only see the flooring for this room including the transition. Hold up a second, YouTube's got a video right here that they think you'll like and I do too. But also, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there. And if you're interested in all the details in a written blog post form, that link is right here. Until next time, be safe and happy building. Come on, Ryan.